New York is a collection of villages. The old have been in charge since before the revolution, until the new people invaded. Well, I'm new. I've only just arrived. You are my niece, and you belong to old New York. George Russell is a power in the land. Before long, he'll put money into his pocket with every train ticket you buy. I think we should know the Russell family. We do not move in the same circles. Mama, you are incorrigible. I take that as the highest praise. Well, how do you find your aunt? Seda is kind, but not clever. And Agnes is clever, but not kind. Mrs. Van Ryn and her sad sister were spying on me today. I don't know why you bother with them. I don't bother with them. I'm afraid New York can be quite challenging at first. We haven't found it so, have we, George? There is no challenge you are not equal to, my dear. We have invited Marion to live with us. She hasn't a penny. I cannot live within Aunt Agnes's confines. You must meet the right people in the right way. Money isn't everything, Agnes. Ah. I don't understand why they have taken me in. I have a job and the fresh start that I need. I want to do something with my life. For a New Yorker, anything is possible. You are the future, Mrs. Russell. And if you were the future, then they must be the past. Well, things move faster nowadays. I hope you're not against Miss Scott. She'll disrupt things. Maybe we need a bit of disruption. Let the tournament begin. Why don't we just go outside and roll in the gutter? It will save time. Do you know Newport well, Miss Russell? The mistress is not a player in the great game. That woman is unsuitable as an acquaintance. I'll make them pay one day. How can anyone be so rich? You bastard. I may be a bastard, Mr. Thorburn, but you are a fool. And of the two, I think I know which I prefer. Astor? We've met a few times, but we don't really know each other. We do now. Come on, you must play something. But we're having such a nice time where we are. What makes you think I brought you here to have a nice time? Carrie, make Mr. Russell play croquet. Any fool can play croquet. They started the game. Well, barge in and make them start over. Mr. Wilson. This fish is unusual, isn't she? To say the least. Let's just find some mallets and then we can stand at the edge of the lawn without attracting attention. How do you know her? Her nephew was at Harvard with me, but as to why she took me up, it's anyone's guess. Handsome young men who talk are always useful. That's what my mother says. And a girl should always listen to her mother. Mr. Van Ryn, I thought you weren't coming. I heard you were in Europe. I was. I've only just got home. I haven't told anyone I'm back yet, but then I thought, why the devil not? May I present Mr. Russell? I know how you feel. I came down from college, and I left minutes later, my mother practically calling down East 61st Street as I went. Where are you on East 61st? My parents have built a house on the corner of Fifth Avenue. They just moved in. But I know it well. My mother lives almost opposite. Huh. Why did they choose to live so far uptown? It's not as far up as it used to be, and they wanted a building plot on the avenue. <laughs> my parents are Mr. and Mrs. George Russell. Has your mother spoken of it? Yes, but uh, not as acquaintances. You've moved in, then? I suppose we have. We? My father, my mother, and my sister. How cozy that sounds. Do you often come to Newport, Miss Astor? I will. My parents bought a house here last year, Beechwood. They've nearly finished the renovations, so I suppose I'll be here a lot. Oh, was there much to do to the place? Well, obviously, my mother couldn't live in a house without a ballroom. <laughs> You may laugh, but as my mother never tires of pointing out, our future success in New York depends entirely on the support and approval of Mrs. Astor. Mm. I'm afraid it's true. She is quite a force. A force for good, I hope. Well, a force to be reckoned with. <laughs> the butler was looking for you. He found me. He had a letter from my mother. She wrote that a cousin has come to live with him while I've been away. Miss Marion Brooke. Mm. So that is something to look forward to. A dumpy spinster with a face like a cabbage and a figure to match. 
We're going into dinner, but before we do, I want to warn you that when you return, you will find tables have been set up for the game of cinch, and you are all playing. But suppose we don't know how. Then you will learn during dinner. Mm. Cinch? Do we really have to? I'd say there's no escape. <laughs> Thank you.